Hey everybody. Thanks for joining us. And I'm sure that Mercedes will be along shortly. There she is. Good morning, Mercedes. Hi, good morning, Kyle. How are you? Good. Let me get the door in the office just a moment. So, yeah, let okay. me back and Sorry, it's because Angie's in the kitchen and I could hear her feedback. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, um, we'll give a couple minutes for people to sign on. Um, but thank you for doing okay. this. I appreciate that. I know you're nervous. Of course. Always. No, don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. This <laughs> is going to be easy. Everybody's, everybody's looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Nice. All right. Just wait a couple more minutes. See how many people we get on, and then we'll get started. Sorry, nice we're just sitting. Back? I'm sorry. Is it nice to have Joe back? Uh, I mean, he's kind of been just in his office, but yeah, I mean, we're glad that he's doing better, that he's healthy, you know, he's healthy and he's able to get back to work. I think he's still a little, I think he's still a little bit kind of not quite a hundred percent yet, but yeah, it's good to have him back, of course. Yep. So, all yeah, right, so we got... We got about 15 people on. Let's get started so we're not punishing everybody that was on time. And then we could put Mercedes out of her misery so she doesn't have to sit here and wait any longer for this. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys. Thank you guys for joining us and, and thank Mercedes for, for sharing with everybody. Um, we haven't done one of these Momentum Mondays in a while, but uh, I always like to share somebody who I see is, you know, kind of not letting this whole crazy pandemic as much as it affects everybody is not really letting it affect their business. So we'll start from the very beginning. So Mercedes, how long ago did you get in the business? So I started in 2003 as an assistant and I licensed since 2004 and I obtained my broker license in 2007 and full time um, 11 years now. In three right. years with all stars. Yeah, three years with us. So what made you get in? Like you started as, as an assistant. What was the reason behind it? Like was, what got you involved as an assistant to begin with? My mom, actually. Um, she was buying and selling properties um, since I was very little. And as far as I could remember, um, she's always told me about real estate and about um, joining uh, you know, an office and, and being an assistant to start. So it was pretty much my mom that got me to real estate. Yeah, my dad got me in, but he kind of twisted my arm to do it. So um, when you first started, right, you got, you got licensed and you were not an assistant any longer and now you're starting your own business. What did you do at the beginning of your business to build business? Well, I first started by selling um, to family actually, uh, to family members. And then from there, um, I joined an office that had a lot of bank loan properties. Um, so I was very fortunate uh, to learn from that. So I sold a lot of bank loan properties. I did a lot of short sales at that time. Um, so that's pretty much where, where I got a lot of the business from. So you, you started on your own in 2004, you said, right? You got licensed in 2004. So that means... 2007, eight, you were still relatively new, right? You were three years into the business when that started. How did that affect you, that market? Um, I was very fortunate to start in that market because I started like in the down market per se. 
So I learned like a lot of things through that market, which is considered like the hard market. Um, so I learned about short sales. I learned how to sell bank owned properties. Uh, so around that time, it uh, was a perfect time, I would say, for me to start full time. So pretty much uh, I was very fortunate to start there. So as your business continued to grow, did it always, I mean, does the majority of your business come from your center of influence? Was there a time when you were doing cold calling and door knocking and, and things like that? Um, yes, we were doing a lot of door knocking, um, a lot of door knocking and uh, somewhat cold calling. I'm going to be honest, I don't like cold calling, but uh, we did a little bit about that. Uh, we did some mailers as well, which worked out very well. Um, we did mailers to like NOV at that time. Um, so that's how I was able to get a lot of short sales. Okay. So if you were now looking back at 2004, right? You in 2004, starting in the business, what would you tell you in 2004, knowing what you know today? I would tell myself to do the... CRM, to start the CRM, because that's where I made a mistake, is that I did not do a CRM, um, and that's where I would tell myself, hey, uh, do a CRM, join All Stars, uh, they have all the tools, because no, honestly, I mean, you guys do have all the, all the right tools for a new agent to start, or for a seasoned agent, you have everything available, and not that it was a... The, a regret wherever I started. It was where I started and I'm grateful for that. But um, All Star says everything in order for someone to succeed that's either a new agent or a seasoned agent. Thank you. I hope we do. That's what I was um, <laughs> so, so March hits us this year, right? And you're having a really good year this year so far going through all this stuff. So Tell us about the first part of the year this year, January and February, before this kind of all hit the fan, as they say. What, what, what were you doing to start to build the momentum at the beginning of the year? Yeah, so before the pandemic, what we did was that we were doing cold calling. Um, we were doing a lot of uh, door knocking. So that's what we were pretty much putting into place. So then the pandemic hit, and of course, we couldn't do any uh, door knocking. And uh, we continued with the cold calling. We continued with the mailers. However, we started reaching out more to our center of influence. And that's what's kept us going is our center of influence. That is why I would tell myself in 2004, CRM is like the most important thing. So that's what I would tell someone that's starting in the business, put a CRM together because that's what's going to keep you uh, going in a good market and in a bad market. Right. So, so just for reference and not to, last year was probably not a great year for you no. production wise. Right. And so was, was that the catalyst to get things started in January? And, and then when, when March hit, how did you not get into a place of, oh man, here we are to 2019 again. So it was the catalyst, but we were doing flips. So we, were do we did a flip that, that took all of our time. And besides taking all of our time, it was like the worst flip we ever did. <laughs> so um, we did make some profit, but my thing would be now um, just focus on real estate and, and not focus on actually doing flips and things like that. And um, each to their own, wherever it works out for someone, you know, but for us, it just didn't work out. And that's the reason why most of our energy was spent on that particular flip and we weren't able to do, uh, you know, cold calling, door knocking or anything like that. So, so then second part of that was March hits. What kept your mindset instilled that I got to produce, I got to produce what to, instead of it stopping you with everything that was happening. So when the pandemic hit, we had a lot of uh, cancellations actually. We had a lot of cancellations. Um, there was two days where I just like wanted to throw in the towel. I mean, because it, it, it happened. 
And um, there was one day that I spent the entire day crying. Like, honestly, I did. And I spoke to our escrow officer and she was like, everything's going to be okay. And I'm like, I know, but it's just so hard right now. We can't do open houses. We can't do all these things. But it all worked out. I lost your audio there for a second. <laughs> Are you stay there? I lost you for a second. Yeah, it muted for some reason. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so you said your escrow officer then said, hey, everything's going to be okay. And then what, did, what happened after that? Because I think that's when we lost you. Yeah, so we just kept on going. We just kept on doing what we had to do regardless. So uh, we started reaching out to our, our sphere of influence and uh, we started sending out mailers and just finding different avenues of, uh, of systems, just putting on different systems in place to be able to uh, generate new business and to continue with our uh, past uh, business as well. Right, so, so you lost those deals at the very beginning, right? Because that was kind of like the panic time. So how, how, since this pandemic has started, how many deals have you opened and, and closed? Since um, we've opened, uh, I don't keep track of all that, but yeah, we've opened probably about 10 since. Yeah, I want to say about 10 of them. Um, we've closed uh, quite a few during the pandemic. Yeah, and, and the reason I asked that is because I want, I want, everybody that's listening to this to see that it's not impossible, right? Doing 10 deals in the span of three months is right to 10 opens in the span of three months. That's pretty good in a regular three month period. And we did that. You were able to do that during a time where there was a lot of questions out there. So I want them to see that it's possible, right? And you feel like it's possible because you're out there doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like you said, it was like a catalyst as well from the past year. We didn't have a good year, but it was because we weren't doing any uh, uh, soliciting or any marketing or we weren't doing any of those things that we should have been doing because we we're busy on that flip. But before the pandemic, we started doing all those things and then the pandemic hit and they were like, oh, geez, you know, what do we do now? So we just found other avenues. And yeah, just doing what we had to do. Well, it's good, right? You got you kept focused on those things. Now, are are you doing are you doing anything special for your mindset period? Like, are you reading different books? Are you listening to podcasts? Or is there anything you're doing to just specifically work on mindset? Yeah, so there's a podcast uh, that I listen to is Joe Rogan. So I like to listen to all these people that he has on there. They have a lot of good things to say. And then um, I'm reading a well. I'm not reading it. It's an audio book. I like to listen to audio books. It's um, an F yourself. I'm not going to oh. say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's a really good book. And then that book, you know, just um, it's very um, straightforward. Uh, you know, no, it doesn't have all those whistles and bells and, you know, about uh, putting your mindset back together. So that, that book is uh, really good to listen to. That's good. Okay. So, and, and the response out there in the world, like, are you finding the responses from potential customers and, and, and clients, buyers and sellers, are you finding that there's more resistance? Are people, are they open to the idea of, Hey, let's, let's start looking or let's put our house on the market. Well, for buyers, uh, the resistance is the market's gonna fall um, you know, right. it's going to take a dip. So should we wait? That's the question that we're getting. And um, that response that I give to them is, you know, I first ask them, what's their situation? Is mm -hmm. it a long-term situation that they're going to buy? Are they going to stay in the home more than 10 years? Or do they plan to stay there one year or two years? Because then at that point, you know, it's a deciding factor for them of waiting, right? So mm -hmm. if their plan is to stay there 10 years, then I tell them it doesn't matter if the market takes a dip because if it takes a dip, it's going to come back right up, you know? So just to take advantage of the interest rate uh, right now that is low, uh, besides that is they have to pay to live somewhere. So they're going to pay yep. rent and rents are high. So they may as well just buy something and take advantage of the tax write-off. So that's right. pretty much what we tell buyers. Sellers, uh, sellers are very easy right now. Because they're like, oh, the market's going to take a dip, so we have to sell. So <laughs> it's easy. It's a no-brainer. 
So see everybody, sellers are easy right now. You just got to go out there and find them. That's what you have to do. So you said that the, the someone asked in the in the uh, chat. The title of the book was "Unf Yourself," right? Yeah. Well. Yeah. I don't want to say yes, it, but, but it's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and what CRM are you using? So you said you you now you got onto that using a CRM, staying in touch with your center of influence. What CRM are you using? Line Disk, because it's with okay. the uh, CRM MLS now. Yeah. So we're right. using Line Disk. And just the, the uh, one where you'll contact people directly, that's the most important one to stay in touch with them all the time. Call them, text them. That's how we got a lot of our, our leads was through that, you know, just calling, texting our, our sphere of influence. That's the most important one. Now, do you have a, a specific system? Like, is there a, is there a way for the contacts or you're like, is there, do you have a, a, a specific setup? Like, is there a drip campaign that goes out? Is it just direct calls? Is it just direct emails? What is your system for staying in touch with that past client? Through Lion's Desk. Right, but is there, like, do you have them in a drip campaign or is it just, oh, hey, yeah. I got to call this person or is there uh, notifications campaign. of yeah. who? So it's a drip campaign through Lion's Desk. Okay, and then are you, is your response, are you getting responses indirectly from those drip campaigns or is more of your response from you actively reaching out? Actively reaching out. That's okay. the most important one. Yeah, so when we text them, when we call them, um, we get a good response. To them. Yeah, I think that's the really Im a real important thing that people have to understand with the CRM is that it's really more for uh, organizing and being more efficient. Mm -hmm. You can't rely on that, on that, yeah drip campaign to be what's going to create your email. That's just to keep your name in front of them. But it's good that you're saying that the act of contact, calling them, texting them and being on top of it. Mm -hmm. Now, how often do you call and text the people that are in your database? Um, so when the pandemic hit right away, I text everybody, even though it took me like an hour or two, I sent a text, just checking in on them, just not um, checking in if you want to buy or sell, but I checked mm -hmm. in on say, how are you? How are you doing? Hope everything is well. Um, I hope that that your um, family is doing well and, and that um, anything I could do, anything you need, reach out to me. Just simple texts like that. And I got a lot of response from it. Everybody actually texted me back and they're all like, you know, thank you for reaching out. Hope you're well as well. You know, and um, that just pretty much just shows that you care, and, and I think that's what's most important for someone is to know that you actually care about them and their um, situation, and not just it, I'm just there to sell you something. Right. Well, it's it's always a it's always a a balance of you know character and competency, right? They want to know who you are as a person, and they also want to know that you're good at what you do. You know, so it's just we can't always hit them with. Hey, I can sell your house. I can sell your house. I can sell your house. It's got to be a lot about that. I care about our connection too in that. So yeah. you, you, you're not alone. You have a team. How many people are on your team? So it's me and my sister, Angie. And then there's Gabriel. Um, Gabriel's mostly part-time. He does other things on the side. So I have my sister as well that, that uh, we work together. And we've been working together for eight years. And then how do you, how do you divide responsibilities with that, with the team? I take most of all of the responsibility. Um, they do like mostly like the showings, um, setting up appointments and paperwork and things like that. But I do, I, I take most of the responsibility for everything. Yeah, I'm gonna, Angie's right there. I wanna make sure that she's, still, she's telling the truth, Angie. She's responsible for everything. <laughs> so, I get into um, everything. She knows I'm a control freak. So I get into everything. <laughs> Well, that's good. That's, I mean, you, you should be a control freak, right? Because it's your business, right? And, and, and yes. that's, it's important that you know what's happening with everything. Um, uh, Rose is asking again, how often do you contact those people in dating? Because I think we kind of talked about how, what's the frequency? So if you, if you call me today, when are you going to call me again? At least once a week. If you're a past yeah. client, at least once a week, I'm texting you something. Um, if there's a holiday in place. If there is um, their birthdays, actually their birthdays are very important. I have them in a calendar. I'll get a, um, 
a notification that it's their birthday and I wish them a happy, a happy birthday. So I make sure that I know their birthdays. Um, I make sure if uh, they have kids and during, you know, our, our, our escrow that I learn about their kids' birthdays or anything important to them, I remember that and I put it in the calendar. So then I'll text them, you know, when it, when the time comes and I'll be like, hey, happy birthday. And they'll be surprised that I even remember. Yeah, I bet they are. So yeah. um, how, many, how many people are in your database? How many people do you have in the CRM that you're contacting? 175. I'm sorry? You broke up a little bit. 175. 175. Okay, and now do you, do you have a, a plan in place for adding that or is it only past clients that get added to that? Past or do you clients have something or anyone that's shown interest? Yes, or anybody that's ever shown interest in buying. So I add them as okay. well. Good. So um, let's start. Let's see if anybody else has any other questions. Um, Carlos is asking if you have an, an example, a brief example of one of the drip campaigns that you use. Um, it's on Lions Desk. I mean, I could send one over to show what, so is, what they send out. So on your, on your drip campaign, how often do the emails go out? Are they just text emails? Are they HTML emails? Are they links to videos? What is the What's the process? Like how often would I get an email? So if I was in your CRM, right? If I was in your database, how often would I get an email communication from you? They go out once a month and it's a, new, it's okay. a newsletter that, that gets sent out to them. Okay, and it's just a newsletter. So once a month they get a newsletter and then their other, mm -hmm. the other touch from you is a phone call or a text. A phone call or a text. Right, okay. So there you go, Carlos. Hopefully she sends a newsletter once a month. That's her drip campaign. Does anybody else, if anybody has questions, go ahead and type them in the, in, the, in the chat box, or if you wanna raise your hand, I'll unmute you so you can ask the question. Um, but let's, let's ask some stuff, right? You, you guys have to have questions. We have somebody here who is killing it during this time where we're all very uncertain about what's happening out there. And so I think you should all want to have some information about what's going on with her and her business. No, no questions, it's crazy. So if, if right now, is there something that's happening in your business, as well as you're doing, right? You've got those 10 deals that you open. Is there something in your business that you would want that you still feel like I need to tweak a little bit to improve? Oh, for sure. I wish I had a better CRM. If I would have started back in 2004, I, I'd feel that I would be in a different position, but everything happens for a reason. So that's most important. I would say for someone that's early starting that they should really, really consider starting a CRM, like putting it together uh, because that's what's going to keep you going on a down market or on an up market. Um, right. Your sphere of influence is what's going to keep you going. So a question from Rosa is that, do you have a company that does your newsletter for you or do you put together the information on the newsletter? I put it together on the lines that, so they have something, a template where you could just uh, put in the information, whatever you want to change and tweak and they send it for you. Okay. Uh, Milton is asking, do you, are you, is your focus on specifically on sellers or on buyers? Like, or is there just, I'm going to put it out there and see who comes. Well, it depends. So sellers, um, now we're, we're focusing on sellers but we also focus on buyers. If we're working with someone that's looking like in a specific area, we'll send out mailers in that area for a listing. So for instance, if I have a buyer, uh, I'll just give an example. We had a buyer that's looking in Manhattan Beach. So we started sending out mailers in that specific general area of what they're looking for to generate a listing for them. So that's what we'll do to try to um, double in both ways. So do, do you send out mailers all the time consistently, or is it a specific reason why you would send out a mailer? For a specific buyer. If we have a specific buyer looking in an area, we uh, send out mailers for that buyer to generate a listing for them. Especially so if there's no listing in the area. So is that is that mailer just specifically like, hey, this is my buyer, they want to buy a home in your area, and it's that straightforward? Is it a letter? Is it a yeah. postcard? What is it? It's just a letter, a simple letter. 
and we've gotten responses through that letter. And uh, good because you have actually have a real buyer. That's why you get the responses, yeah. right? We actually have a buyer looking for it. So when they call us, they're like, "Oh, what the uh, you know, what's the gimmick? Like, what, what what's the cash? Like, you know, we're like." Uh, we seriously have a buyer. Like we could send you a pre-qualified -quali pre buyer. So can we set up the appointment and show it to them? So and how, how, how many listings have you gotten from that buyer letter? We've gotten, um, see, I, I've done it ever since uh, the short sale time. So I want to say we've gotten about 10 listings through that, through that specific letter. Oh, that's great. Um, so there he goes, guys, letters to sellers about a, a real buyer that you have. Just a second, Irene, I'll get to you in just a second. Um, someone is asking, Angeline is asking, do you use social media for your clients? Do you do advertising through social media? And if you do, what do you do? Is it Facebook, Instagram? I just started getting really involved in Facebook and Instagram. I'm not going to lie. I was not doing it because I'm a very shy person. A lot of people don't know that. But um, I'm very shy. So yes, I started doing that and I plan on eventually doing videos and things like that because it's very intuitive and people like seeing that. You know, they like watching you and seeing you on, on the Facebook and online and all that. So eventually I want to get into that. We'll see you now. And that'll work. You're, now you've taken your first step out of being shy. You're on camera with 37 people watching you. Yes. So you're taking that first step out. <laughs> Irene, you had a question. Go ahead. Yes. Um, thank you for doing this, uh, Mercedes. Hi, Irene. <laughs> Hi. I have actually three. Do you do any networking? And the second question is, do you attend educational seminars? And the third one is, do you have a coach or do you belong to a mindset group? Okay. So to answer your first question, um, do, do I do any uh, trainings or anything like that? Networking. Like that. The first networking. one is networking. Okay. So I've been to some networking events when they were available. You know, I, I have been to some, but I don't do it much, which I should get myself out there more because I'm a very shy person. So yes, I do. I should do that more. Um, any uh, training. So when the pandemic hit, I did a lot of Zoom, a lot of Zoom meetings, a lot of trainings. Um, I logged on to a lot of podcast so yes I, I have done a lot of that and then um what was your third question the third one is do you have a personal coach or do you belong to a certain mindset group no mindset group no personal coach i do follow joe though every morning when i see his um facebook post that you know i, I enjoy seeing that so i see things like that i i follow people i guess um, I'll see their, their things and that motivates me, but I, I don't follow like one specific person. Um, I could say like, I like reading about Anthony Robbins and the things that he, that he does. So I enjoy uh, listening to those things. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Irene. That was very insightful questions. Does anybody else have any other, okay, so let me see, wait, hold on. I have here, well, Gabby wants to know if you're so shy, how do you door knock? and talk to sellers. Okay, so when I'm one-on-one -on -one with a person, um, client, I'm not shy. I swear to God, I'm not. I swear to you, like, I'm a different person. Um, it's uh, public speaking and doing things like this is that what, what makes me shy. But one-on-one um, -on -one with clients, uh, of course, my family, it's in a different story. But one-on-one -on -one with clients, door knocking, one-on-one, um, -on -one, I'm good with that. I think you're doing pretty well right now. For being shy, <laughs> I think you're doing pretty well right now. <clears throat> Anybody else have any questions? Come on, you guys have an opportunity here to, to pick her brain. So let's take advantage. Uh, let's see, Gilbert says, what is your listing presentation like? And do you use Mike Ferry? Yes. We do. Actually, I have um, the marketing action and it's from the office and it includes some other Mike Ferry stuff. Yeah, I, I do follow him. I mean, I, I'm not, I don't have a trainer from there, but yeah, I do follow the Mike Ferry stuff. It's very simple and um, just 
down to the point. Good. And you use the listing presentation that's in All Starts Connect, so everybody has. Mm -hmm. That's what I use. It's very simple. It's not, I mean, it's not like rocket science. So Joe is asking you, what have you changed during this time? What have I changed? So I've gained more skills. Um, I've uh, listened to more audio books. And I'm, I want to say that I'm, I'm getting a little bit out of more out of my shell. So that's what, what, I've, what I've changed. Good. Well, if you guys have any other questions for Mercedes. Okay. Well, Mercedes, is there anything that you want to say to everybody? Well, I just want to say thank you for um, joining on in and listening to me and uh, just, you know, letting you know it's not difficult. People think it's, oh, it's very hard, you know, to, to do business nowadays. And it's not actually um, difficult. It just takes work. And I think that's all we have to do is just work. Good. And there's one last question just popped up. And this is really going to put you on the spot. Do you, would you ever do a live listing presentation for, for one of the classes oh. in front of everybody? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess if Richard asks, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're in trouble now. Okay, so you want you want to sh you wanted to share something with everybody too. So let me put that up. So Mercedes wanted to share this quote with you guys. So Mercedes, do you want to talk to yes. them about this quote? Absolutely. So I have this quote um, next to my bedside, and whenever I'm feeling down or if I um, feeling like oh, you know, this is so hard. Then I read this quote and I, it puts me back into a perspective over why it is I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah, or if I'm feeling shy as well, or I don't want to put myself out there. And I, if those of you guys that are seeing it, I'm also going to share it into the, uh, into the chat. So you guys can download that and have that picture also of that. Did you want to say something? Dad, did you want to say yes, something? Yes, I do. I, I do. I do want to say something. And thank you for putting that up. But I also want to say that Mercedes, guys, is very coachable. Okay? She says she doesn't have a Mike Ferry coach uh, or trainer, any of those things. But no, yes, we do talk about business and uh, business plan and all That's those right. things. And she is very coachable. Okay? So take that yeah. into account. Be coachable. Okay? Take on the recommendations, the look at what, uh, what is working and what's not working and do it, right? Because that's what she does. And so does Angie and Gabriel. So you guys are, are great. And yes, I have to say, stay coachable. That's what you have to do. And that's all I have to say. And thank you, Mercedes, for doing this. That's right. Thank you, Richard. Yes, yeah. So yeah, let right. me let me thank you. Let me thank you again, Mercedes. I appreciate you doing this. I know it took a it took a lot to get you to agree to doing this, but I think you did a great job. And I think everybody that's that was here was is better for having heard it. And and hopefully what it does is motivate them to to work, knowing that you're out there doing it. So thank you so much. I I, I really appreciate it. So so thank you. And you did a great job. Thank you. Thank you for listening on it. Thank you. Thanks, Mercedes. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Thank Mercedes. You Mercedes. Big round of applause for Mercedes. Yay. That was, was great. Thank All you. Right, Mercedes. Yes. Thank you. All right, guys. Everybody stay safe.